Well, good morning. Let me thank you for being here this morning. Happy Mother's Day to you mothers, and I trust that today will be a great day, bring you uh, uh, a day of joy, being able to spend it with your moms. I know that we're here also in remembering some of our moms uh, who has passed on and who is waiting or who are waiting for us to join them in heaven and uh, you know what it's a special day there's no doubt about it so i trust that whether you're honoring or you're remembering your mom that this day will be a day uh, in which will bring you joy and happiness in remembering and honoring them just a few announcements this morning back on the back table uh, there is a little card for jars day jars day is going to be Saturday, May 15th, it's going to run from 2, uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the JAR Center. There will be helicopter rides, plane uh, rides, boat rides, or four-wheel vehicle rides. There's some charge on that, so you may want to uh, investigate that a little bit further, uh, getting in touch with some folks down there. They're going to have music and food trucks. Uh, the museum will be open. Uh, you can ride through. You can stop. There's just so many different options that you can do. But just put that on your calendar if you're interested in what they do down there. I know that it would be a good day and a day of learning. Back in the back, um, there is an offering plate on the table. We're taking up a love offering for a need in the community. It's a ministry need. So uh, if you would like to uh, help out in that ministry need, you can write a check to Waxhaw Baptist Church and just put down love offering for ministry need. You can put cash. You can write uh, or you can just uh, do whatever you want to do on that, however you want to do it. But uh, I know that this ministry would be uh, very well pleased and they would thank you in helping them at this time uh, that they're in uh, may 16th at the 8:45 service only nursery and children's church is going to start next week so you know what thank the lord for that it's going to be at the 8:45 service only so at this point in time it will be the children's church will be for three to six year olds uh, if you are participating in that, the first six weeks of the lessons are back here on the back, left back here. You'll see uh, them up on the wall. They're, your names are on those lessons. So uh, if you would just look through that, they're right back here uh, to my left, uh, back there on the wall above the table. You can grab those and that's where they will be uh, each six weeks. So we're, we'll have them ready for you just to pick up right there. Just to let you know about yesterday, you know what? There were 13 or 15 of us that went to Love Life yesterday. Uh, it was a great time of worship, a great time of prayer. Uh, and we had one mother who went into the ultrasound bus who chose life for her child yesterday while we were there. And... Uh, one of the guys sent me a picture last night of her sitting on the bus with the picture of her baby smiling. And you know what, folks, that was well worth going up there, praying uh, and being amongst them. And I'm looking forward to seeing how Waxhaw Baptist Church will continue to be involved in love life in the coming months. I spoke with Debbie Braswell yesterday for the food pantry. They said that they serve 50 people. Uh, yesterday in the food pantry so we thank them for that um, if you would like to serve in any capacity please let me know we've got openings for Sunday school for kids Sunday school uh, if you are interested in teaching there uh, if you could see Erica Icorn I know that she would uh, love to be able to talk with you about that uh, nursery uh, Janet Cowick is leading that up for us and i know that she would love to have you uh, help in that aspect of it or children's church uh, and you can see me or joan about that if you would please keep the family of jan hollingsworth in your prayers jan went home to be with the lord yesterday morning uh, we will be having her graveside service here 
at uh, Waxhaw Baptist Cemetery at 11 o'clock on Tuesday. Uh, and then if you would, please uh, keep the family of Claudia Yarborough. Claudia went home yesterday morning to be with the Lord. Um, and so we are still in the process of planning her service. Uh, they have to meet with the uh, funeral home today at 930. So I will let you all know a little bit more about that. But uh, please keep uh, Don and Linda uh, in your prayers as they plan Claudia's celebration for life. Just remember also that we have a business meeting on the 23rd at 5 p.m. And if there's anything else that may pertain to you in the bullet, then just be aware of that. It's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. You know what? The Lord is sitting on his throne. He's in control of uh, everything that's going on. And you know what? What a great day it is to be able to come in and celebrate our moms. And with that, I want to read Proverbs 31, verses 25 and following. It says, Strength and dignity are her clothing. She smiles at the future. She opens her mouth in wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and bless her, her husband also. And he praises her, saying, Many daughters have done nobly but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the product of her hand and let her works praise her in the gates. Happy Mother's Day once again to everyone here and those who are watching uh, online. Come and prepare your hearts as Brady comes and leads us in this time of worship. Good morning once again, everybody. Pray y'all have had a good week. Happy Mother's Day again. Hope y'all have a blessed day. Let's stand and sing this song out good and loud. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. His name is wonderful, His name is wonderful, His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He's the great shepherd, the rock of all ages, almighty God is he. Bow down before him, love and adore him, his name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty King, Master of everything. His name is wonderful, Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty King, Master of everything. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He's the great shepherd, the rock of all ages, almighty God is he. Bow down before him love and adore him his name is wonderful jesus my lord let's go to lord in prayer dear heavenly father lord we just thank you for being able to come into your house and worship you father we thank you that we could come in and we can Remember and honor our mothers, Lord, on this day, and we just ask, Lord, that you would just bless them, that you would just bless us in remembering what they meant to us and what they mean to us. 
Lord, we just pray that you would just prepare our hearts for this worship service. We just ask, Lord, that you would clear out whatever it may be in our lives uh, and in our minds and our hearts, Lord. And may your Holy Spirit fill us so that, Lord, we can worship you, the one true God. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy and your grace. And we thank you, Lord, that you're right here in this place with us. Just be with us now as we continue to worship you. And for that, Lord, we'll thank you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to worship the Lord this morning in song with Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. What a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Thank you. You may be seated. appear the hour 
I first believe So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame and i love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain so i'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last i lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun we've no less days to sing god's praise than when we first So with it being Mother's Day, I wanted to um, do a song that was a children's song and also invite you all to sing with me. So you all know the B-I-B-L-E, right? Yes. <laughs> mm. If you would all like to sing with me, please do. <laughs> So sorry. <laughs> the starting notes for this song are the B I the B I B L E the B I B L E. Which one is it? <laughs> <laughs> Just having a fun time here. <laughs> yes, here we go. So, <laughs> please sing with me. B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand up alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E.
Isn't it great to be in the Lord's house this morning? You know what? It's like I've told Brady many times as we've talked. This isn't about perfection. It's about loving on each other. It's about having a little bit of fun. Because you know what? I know that the Lord had a little bit of fun in his life. And it's about coming together. And it's about uh, loving the Lord our God. So, you know, it, 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 uh, we all laugh. Brady, but you know what? It, it's good to laugh, to be able just to laugh at ourselves, to be able to see that we're not perfect yet, but one day we will be. And there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong, as I've told Brady before, to stop, start over again, you know, and, and get everybody involved. So uh, thank you, Brady. Thank you, Ann, for uh, leading us in our worship. And thank you all for being here this morning. I want to speak with you this morning about the heart of a mother. The heart of a mother, we're in Luke 1, chapter 1. We're going to be in uh, verses 46 through 50. I'm really going to focus probably on the first three or four verses. But let me explain to you the reason why I chose this passage this morning. As many of you know, um, I watch the series, Laura and I watch the series called The Chosen, and it is a good series. Uh, it, if you haven't seen it, you ought to pull it up, watch season one, season two. But as I was thinking about Mother's Day these past few weeks, I couldn't help but think about Mary, the mother of Jesus. You ever thought about her? You ever thought about who she was, what she did, what she thought? You know what, from what all of I can see, she was a teenager when the angel came and spoke to her. And in season two, episode three of The Chosen, Mary was sitting next to the fire with the disciples. And, and they were all talking about their lives and they asked Mary about Jesus. It was, it was such a great little conversation that probably we don't think about much. And she said he was no trouble at all. He didn't give her any trouble. Uh, he knew or she knew that he was different at the age of 12. She said, you know what? When he was little as a baby, he needed me. As a child, he trusted me. But as he grew up into a man and he left to go into his ministry, she felt as if he did not need her anymore. You know where I'm at, moms? You know where I'm at? You see, a little bit later in the clip, he comes in from healing many in Syria. He's tired. He's bloody from the people he, he had been healing. His feet was sore and hurting. He walked past the group and said goodnight. And as he took his sandals off, he could be heard grunting. You see, this is the God man. This is the son of man. And when he was trying to take his sandals off and he was grunting, Mary ran to him. She washed his feet, she washed his hands, she wiped off his face and he hugged her and he said, thank you, mom. What would I do without you? She helped him into bed and she left hearing him say his nightly prayers. You see, I think all mothers have a moment like this. I think they have many moments like this. Doesn't matter what age their children may be. Where they think their children don't need them anymore. But you see, it's furthest from the truth, right? No matter the age, children needs or need their mothers. God made mothers unique. He designed them for the purpose of motherhood. Nothing can take their place. No one, nothing. Washington Irvin states, the love of a mother is never exhausted. 
It never changes. It never tires. It endures through all. In good repute in the face of the world's condemnation, a mother's love lives on. Isn't that sweet? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what has went on in your life. Doesn't matter where you're at in your life. Doesn't matter if that mother is a grandparent, a grandmother, an aunt, someone who has adopted you, or your real mom. Nothing can take their place. And I want us to see this morning in the heart of a mother. Look with me in Luke chapter 1, verse 46. Of course, we see previous to this that the Gabriel, uh, that Gabriel, the angel, came and he talked to Mary about what was going to happen. And then she went to visit Elizabeth. And uh, when she was greeting Elizabeth, John jumped in the womb. And then Mary goes into this magnificent prayer and prays. And she says, and Mary said, my soul exalts the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. For he has had regard for the humble state of his bond slave. For behold, from this time on, all generations will count me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is upon generation after generation towards those who fear him. He has done mighty deeds with his arms. He has scattered those who were proud in their thoughts of their heart. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, and he has exalted those who were humble. He has filled the hungry with the good things and sent away the rich empty-handed. He has given help to Israel, his servant, in remembrance of his mercy. And as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and the descendants forever. And Mary stayed with her about three months and then returned to her home. The first truth I want us to see in this passage is this. Is the heart of a mother involves the decision to love the decision to love. In verse seven, uh, 47, it says, And my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. You see, love starts with the Savior of this world. Mary knew the Lord and she trusted in him. She said God was her Savior. Moms, can you t say that this morning? Can you really and truly say to your children and to the world that God is my Savior? You see, Mary grew up in the ways of the Lord. She was obedient in his plans for her. In fact, when Gabriel comes, she says, may it be as you say. You see, that's obedience. That's submitting to the Lord. She didn't argue about that submitting. What did she say? Not my will, but yours. Kind of like Jesus did in the garden. When he was saying, Lord, if there, Father, if there's any other way. But if not. Your will be done. You know what? That's what Mary said. And that's what Mary was praising him through this prayer about. Because she was pregnant at that time. Carrying the Lord and the Savior of this world. What does that word decision mean? It means concluding or determining a resolution. You see, Mary came to a determination of listening to the Lord's plan for her life. You know, we make many decisions in our life. But what do we determine to follow the Lord's plan? Moms, do you determine to follow the Lord's plan in your, in your life? No matter how old you are. No matter what you're doing. It's not just something in which when we have, you have your kids at home. It's throughout life. A mother in her love for her child or children has given her life to the Savior. She understands her hope lies only in the truth of God. She understands Jesus came to give her a purpose and for forgiveness. Mothers, you have a purpose in your life. Whether you think so or not. Your purpose is always to be there for your children. 
unconditionally. Just like the Savior is here for us unconditionally. She understands he's died for her, was buried and resurrected to give her life. And in understanding that, then she understands her purpose is her husband and her children. Secondly, the heart of a mother involves dedication to love, verse 48. For he has regarded for the humble state of his bond servant. For behold, from this time on, all generations will count me blessed. What does dedication mean? What does dedication mean? Being totally devoted to a task or a purpose. You know what? My mom was totally devoted to the task of being a housewife, of being a mother. She was always there for me. You know what? She didn't start work until I started middle school. And where she worked was at the school. I was blessed. I could see my mom every day. I was blessed in high school. I would drive her to work every day. She was the high school secretary. She and I could have conversations that otherwise we might not have had. Mom was dedicated to me and my brother and my dad. You see, Mary said that she was a bond slave to the Lord's will. You see, that's dedication to love right there. Mary said, it doesn't matter what I'm going to do. It doesn't matter what I, my dreams may be at this point in time. You see, she disregarded her own will. A bond slave is one who gives themselves to another's will. Being willing to be used by Christ in extending his will and advance his calls. You see, she put everything aside to be God's chosen vessel. I want you to think what it cost Mary. Mary was in her teens. She was getting ready, what? To be married. She was getting ready, and she had dreams of her own life until Gabriel came. And when Gabriel came, she understood that there was a higher calling, a higher dedication in her life. Her reputation would be on the line, right? You see, we know that it was a virgin birth, but all the people in the community didn't know that. They, they would, what, assassinate her character, her reputation. Oh, who is this lady who said that she was so good, that she was God's chosen, and yet she's pregnant? But you know what? She didn't let that bother her, and she didn't allow that to stop her dedication of love to the Lord. And the plan in her life. She was excited about being married. But she understood it wasn't about her. One thing that I understand when I watch Laura. And when I watched Laura with Jake. When I watch Laura with me. It's not about Laura. It's about God. It's about being that bond slave. It's about giving up her own will to do what God has called her to do. Mom's love is a dedicated love. It's dedicated. Always thinking about others, serving others before herself. She is praised for it. She's an excellent wife. She's an excellent mom. Her husband trusts her. Her children praise her, Proverbs 31 said. What are her characteristics? Well, throughout this praise and this prayer of praise, we see that her characteristics involve love. A deep af affection for giving of oneself. Isn't that what love's all about? Isn't that what Jesus has done for us? Didn't Jesus put self aside and go to the cross of Calvary? Died, shed his blood for our sins, was buried, and three days later gave us victory. You see, that's love, folks. When one lays down their life for another. You see, that's really what God wants us to do whether we're moms or we're dads we crucify self 
to do his will, to do what his word talks about. You know, in the culture in which we live in today, moms get beat up. You see, mom has to be a super mom. Mom has to go to work. She has to make the money too. And she, she has to do all these things in the culture in which we live in instead of understanding that, you know what, it's all right for mom to stay home with the kids. It's all right. That's the highest calling that you could have. Well, you know what, we don't have this, we don't have that. You know, I can promise you that moms, if you stay home or you stayed home, maybe you can agree to this. But when Laura stayed home, we had everything we needed. Not everything we wanted. You see, her character involves exalting, esteeming highly to celebrate. You see, she exalts in understanding what her purpose has been or what her purpose was. She rejoices exceedingly gladly. Exceedingly glad. Moms, do you rejoice in your, in your children? Do you rejoice in the life that God has given you in raising your kids? She's humble. She's one who perceives moral littleness and guilt she's blessed she's happy to be who she is with and she understands her worth is in jesus christ and in what he asked her to do she is merciful oh my goodness can you say amen kids was your mom merciful to you amen i know my mom was <laughs> She fears. She has respect for the Lord. She has all for the Lord. She serves and helps through the gifts and the talents that the Lord has given her. Helps those who are in need. She uses her offering and her gifts to uplift the kingdom of God. She teaches her kids of who Christ is and lives that as an example. Thirdly, the heart of a mother involves the direction to love. The direction to love. What, what is that direction? What does that mean? It means a course along which something moves. It's instructions on how to reach a destination. You see, Mary knew the direction she was going. Why? Because we see it between uh, uh, chapter 1, verses 26 and, and verse 38, where Gabriel comes and tells her, what her direction's going to be. Mary knew that direction she was going. You know, the angel pronounced it. And then what? The shepherds came in and they gave God glory. They gave Christ glory in the manger. And then Simeon. We can't forget about Simeon. Where they went and brought Jesus to the temple. And Simeon said, hey, you know what? Your heart's going to be broken. You see, Mary knew her direction. And she still had a love for that direction that she was going in. Why? Because that's the direction in which God gave her. She was the one in which took the step forward, who, who took that step in saying, yes, I know that this isn't going to be easy. And yes, I don't know everything that's going to happen. And, and I know that her heart was broken in many different ways. But she was the one that wrapped him in claws and laid him in the manger. She was the one who was worried and anxious when she found him at 12 years old in his father's house listening and, and, and teaching people. She was the one that knew that he was there in her time of need where they were at the wedding. And she came to him and she said, hey, they're about we're ready to run out of wine. Can you do something? And she knew and she understood that, that because of her his love for her, that he would take care of that. In that time of need, he provided. She carried him. She watched him grow, watched his ministry, watched him on the cross, watched him beaten, whipped, put on the cross, stood right there with him, bloodied, beaten, people cussing him and mocking him. She watched him as he took his final breath and they laid him in the grave. And she didn't 
really put two and two together at that point in time. All she knew is she'd lost a son. But then she realized on the third day when she saw him again. That she had done everything that the Lord wanted her to do. That it was not all for naught. But it was for his glory. To fulfill his purpose. You see, she bowed to the will of God. She trusted him with her life. In the most difficult times. In the grief too heavy to bear. She still trusted him. Don't know where you're at today, mom. Don't know if you have one that's a prodigal who's running all over the place, who doesn't care. Don't know if you've lost a child. Don't know if you've talked to your children in a while. But let me encourage you today to trust in the Lord. To allow Him and His plan to come out. Mom's past and present and future, remember his plan for you. My mom knew her plan. It was to glorify God in whatever she did. Recall everything he has given you on this journey. Pass them down to your children and your grandchildren and your kids and your friends and your family. Teach your children about the Lord and trust in him. Follow him, not the world. Don't follow the world, moms. Don't, don't let the world cave in on what you know is true. Allow the world to see the light that you have raised so that they will go out and be productive members of society and, and testimonies for the Lord. Follow him, not the world. Remember, moms, especially younger moms, moms-to-be, your main concern is for your husband and your children. It's not to make money. It's not to go out and, and do things because the world wants you to do. Your main concern is at home. You know what? That doesn't preach real well to the world and to our younger generations. And God will let you know. You read Proverbs 31. You'll see that that lady worked. But she was at the house. She had other little things. She had businesses. But her main concern was what? Taking care of her husband and her children in the household. Leave a legacy. Even in tragedy. God forbid that you've lost a son or a daughter. Or a child in some way. But trust in the Lord. What's the common denominator we see? What's the common denominator? The love of Jesus Christ. He's at the center of it all. He is the heart of the matter for all moms. Charles Swindoll. In his book. Strong Family. Talks about the IOUs. Which applies to moms everywhere. It says, I owe you for your time, day and night. I owe you for your example, consistent and dependable. I owe you for your support, stimulating and challenging. I owe you for your humor, sparky and quick. I owe you for your counsel, wise and quiet. I owe you for your humility, genuine and grace. I owe you for your hospitality, smiling and warm. I owe you for your insight, keen and honest. I owe you for your flexibility, your patience, and joyful. I owe you for your sacrifices, numerous, quickly forgiven. I owe you for your faith, solid and true. I owe you for your hope, ceaseless and indestructible. I owe you for your love, devoted and deep. You know what, moms? Whether you know it or not, your children still need you. Whether you know it or not, they still need you. 
reach out to them. Let them know. The heart of a mother involves a decision to love, a dedication to love, and a direction to love. You may be saying to me this morning, Chris, my mom was not like that. That's not the way my mom was. Well, you know what? Be the mom that you know and will always want it. Be that mom. Choose to follow Jesus Christ and his plan and his way. It's not too late. Whether you're 20 or you're 95, you can begin now by asking the Lord to help you, strengthen you in doing that. Maybe your mother is a mom of love. She taught you the ways of the Lord to trust in him and not lean on your understanding. She's been the example to you growing up into adulthood. Thank the Lord today for. Thank the Lord today for. She might not be here. She may be with him now. But thank the Lord for her. For the blessing she was or she is to you. Maybe this morning you just want to thank the Lord for your mom. You do that. Maybe you miss her so much you just need to let the tears flow and the heart heal. Happens to me all the time. Driving down the road and I hear a song that mom used to love and comes back. Tears have just come back. Maybe you need to do that this morning. It could be that maybe you're going to be a mother or a mother one day and you're thinking how can I be the best mother I can it starts with a relationship with Jesus Christ and it starts with a relationship with him and in his word and how he teaches what a mother ought to be maybe you are here and you don't have a relationship with your child mom maybe you don't I'm sorry if that's the case or maybe you're here this morning, children, and you don't have a relationship with your mom. Can I tell you this? Can I tell you, don't hesitate today after you leave this place to go talk to them, to phone them, whatever it may be. It's the best phone call you'll ever make in your life. Let them know how much you love them. doesn't matter what they've done, how they've done it. Tell them you love them. Tell them you forgive them. Tell them you just wanted to let them know. Happy Mother's Day and I love you. And so does Jesus Christ. How will you follow the Holy Spirit this morning? What's he speaking to you about this morning? On this Mother's Day. Don't know how he is. But you know what? You can respond to him. Right where you're sitting. You can come to the altar. And you can pray. You can take your mom by the hand. You can sit or stand where you're at and pray for them. Or you can bring them up front and pray for them. You do whatever the Lord wants you to do during this time of invitation. Brady and Ann, you come and you lead us in this time of invitation. Let's stand. Jesus is tenderly calling thee home, calling today, calling today. Why from the sunshine of love wilt thou roam farther and farther away? is calling the weary to rest, calling
calling today, calling today. Why from the then and thou shalt be blessed. He will not turn thee away. Calling today, calling today. Jesus is calling, is tenderly calling to. Thank you all for being here today. I want to tell the mothers once again, happy Mother's Day. Uh, enjoy the day. Children, if you're here with them, enjoy the day with your mom. Because you know what? None of us are guaranteed tomorrow. If you're watching, we want to wish you a happy Mother's Day also. And just trust that this day will be a blessing. I'm going to say a prayer, and then I'm going to ask you all, if you would, just to sit down just one more minute. I'm going to recognize Joan Fox here in a minute. And we've got some things that we would like to give out. Uh, so if you would, just hold on tight after we dismiss. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this day. And we thank you, Father, that we could come into your house and worship you through song and through instruction, through, through your word, Lord. And we just pray that you would just bless each and every mom who's watching or who is here today. Lord, we just thank you for them. We thank you, Lord, for their love and their mercy. We thank you, Lord, for their guidance. Thank you, Father, for all that they've done for us to allow us to be the people that we are. Father, we just ask that you would just allow us to leave this place here in a minute. That, Lord, we would be the light and the salt that you would call us to be out in a dark and dying and decaying world. We ask, Lord, that you would open the door up for us to tell somebody, even maybe a mother today, who you are and what you mean to us. Father, I thank you for that one who chose life yesterday. That one who is celebrating Mother's Day today because she chose life. And to see that picture of her holding her baby. That picture in her womb. And a smile on her face. Lord, we just give you all the praise and the honor and the glory for that. And just ask, Lord, that you would just continue to do a mighty work in that ministry. Thank you once again for all that you do. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You be seated, please. Jonah.